How you doing? Did you have a rough Saturday night? Hmm? Did you? Uh-huh. I remember those days. No, I don't. Hey, listen, say hi to everybody. Say hi to everybody. See, I'm doing just fine, everybody. Safe and sound. Yeah. What are you doing? What are you doing? Look here, guys. My elderberry that I planted last year is coming up all away from the actual original situation here. Look, 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 look. So I'm gonna have to come in here and expand this. This is the good thing about elderberry. If you have a couple of really nice plantings and they make it through winter, they go out and sprawl like crazy. Looks like we are set for elderberry. Looky here, y'all. My comfrey is all coming back in this spot. Looking good, looking good. Mr. Charles, old Alabama gardener, I know you're smiling down on us right now. Mia, say hi, everybody. See, Mia, I'm so pretty. Mia. Oh. So good morning, welcome to Appalachia's Homestead. So here's what I'm doing. I'm beginning to ferment my feed. I have done this off and on for several, several years. It's that morning time, y'all. Everybody's up and out and barking and doing everything they gotta do. But listen, a lot of you are asking questions about me fermenting my feed. I'm not really gonna call it potentially a full fermentation process. What I'm doing right now is I'm testing, good morning, how much I need to do in order to properly feed my hens. So I am wetting the food for a couple of days, testing out how much. Let's talk more about this. Good morning, sir. Can you explain yourself? Okay. Golly, we're gonna be almost 80 degrees today, very hot, and then we're gonna get snow next weekend. It's March, winter's not over. So when the weather warms up, they want to, when the weather warms up, that's the best time for us here in East Tennessee, Southeast Tennessee, for us to do what I'm showing you uh, that I'm starting to do. The reason we do this is number one, I'm going to be honest with you, number one goal is to save money on feed. Feed has gotten so incredibly expensive. Have you seen the prices? And it's not just chicken feed, it's everything across the board that people are having to pretty much find ways to better afford to feed their animals or they're cutting back their animals or like I've told you before, farmers like me, what we'll do is if we have to take the hit, then we're going to start keeping and conserving more of our products for ourselves. It's just the way it's going to be, folks. Y'all better be getting in really good and really tight with those local farmers and take care of them. I'm really serious. Okay, this is a little bit better, a little bit cooler, a little bit quieter. The whole point of wetting your chicken feed, and you can do that with your pellets, you can do that with your grains, and you can do it with your crumble. You can mix them up. You're having like a mix-up party, okay? However you feed them. The idea, however, is to wet the foods, and typically most people do about a 50-50 ratio. I want to try, I'm doing more between 50 and 0.75 of what I'm used to feeding each feeding and then wetting it and seeing how much it gives because I have a lot of birds. I don't have just like a dozen birds. You know, I have eight. <laughs> right. Okay. So long story short, I'm kind of testing what I am going to be doing. We did this several years ago and we loved it. But then again, you know, we have some, we got away from it. 
I don't tend to do it in the winter because everything freezes so hard. It does depend on your situation of where you are and where, how much space you have and how you can keep your feet. If you can bring it into more of a temperature controlled environment, then that's good. Winters can be kind of hard here, so that's something we just sort of back off of. Now, I am gonna be transitioning to, I always do this this time of year when, the, when we have longer days and the girls really start laying a lot of eggs, I do transition to a 16% protein. I have been, I bounced it up some through the winter as high as 28% because I'm trying to keep them out of molt. I'm trying to keep a few eggs coming in here and there, but we're done with that. So that is going to save me some money on my feet, a couple of dollars a bag, okay? I'm spending almost $16 a bag right now. Um, it depends on what you're buying, depends on where you're going. Some of you are higher than $20 right now. But the idea is, like I said, is to wet the feed. You might wanna try a 50 to 75% uh, ratio in terms of what you're feeding. So if you're used to feeding, say, let's just come up with some simple math here. If you're used to feeding four scoops, cut it back to three. Try that and see what you think. If it's fine, cut it back again. This is that rationing, you know, I've been talking about. It's good for your wallet too. So what I'm going to be doing, like I said, is cutting it back and then I'm going to wet it. Now I'm going to be, if once I get my number, I'm going to transition to the three day process. I'm going to be moving into that I'm not there yet. I'm just answering questions basically of what in the world are you doing? Because there's a lot of people that have never seen this or considered it. But here's the bottom line. Whether you have four hens, eight birds, 12 birds, or you know, however many you have, this process does take a little bit of time and it takes a little bit more effort on you. But like I said, when you're spending 16, 18, 20, 25 dollars a bag on chicken feed and you can go through one every day, every other day, it's worth your time. Okay, so every morning and every evening, I feed three buckets. Two for the larger, and you can see I've pulled them back. These are actually, I had less feed. Let's go and get this started, y'all. This is about a half bucket right here. Let me tell you something right now. Stick your hose down into your grains. Now, I'm just going to let these soak. Look, I'm out here in flip-flops. I'm not even ready to feed yet. I'm just getting this prepped. Let them, I'm just going to get them wet and let them soak. We actually started these two buckets last night. My son did. I'm teaching him. So, But listen, I'm going to get this water down in here because I'm telling you it turns into a hard. Ooh, did that hit you? <laughs> I know, bunny. It turns into a hard mash. So you can already see a lot of this has started to fluff up. So what I'm doing is just testing my amounts right now more than anything. Let's turn that water off. Hang on. Okay, so like I said, I know this process works, but what I'm doing is testing how much I want to start with, how it looks, and how happy they are. The reason I'm doing that is because you have to be very careful with pulling back feed and such with chickens. Just like any other animal, they're hungry. And when they don't have a lot of sources, especially right now, see, we're just now starting to come into spring with things starting to bloom a little bit. There's a few more bugs in the area, whatever. My point is, is they're gonna turn on each other. When chickens, a lot of times, don't have enough food, just like quail, if you don't, make, if you don't keep them happy, they become aggressive with each other. So I have, a, you know, and I can go out there and I can feed and I can go, oh, they look happy. And maybe they are, but I have to give it several days and several feedings to make sure I'm right because I don't want to come out and there be a bloody fight or something bad has happened to a, a hen that got stuck in the corner because they will cannibalize other birds. I have videos on that as well. They absolutely will start eating another bird if she's gotten wounded or bloody, and once the pecking starts, it doesn't end, okay? So I'm being very careful with how I'm starting this. I recommend that for you as well. So you're gonna see me, hopefully, uh, if I can get a video up about it, transition into different buckets and moving into the three-day process 
and teaching Gabriel about the three-day process because I had to teach him about this. So we're in that learning curve mode. We're also learning about how, you know, how soft it's going to get, how to scoop it, how to mix it. So you're going to go through that a little bit. Now, like I said, if you only have three or four hens, it may not be such a big deal for you. And, uh, you know, you don't go through as much feed as we do. So every home, every farm, every chicken coop and run is different. So I, that's why I say start the process out. Wet the food. Let it soak the water up. It is going to absorb the water. It is going to make it fluffier. It's just like this. Because Gabriel asked me, he said, how is this going to help? I said, well, when you pour oatmeal in a bowl, what does it look like? And he just sort of looked at me. I said, okay, then you add water to it and you cook it. What happens? It becomes thicker. It becomes more wholesome for the belly. And you eat it. It's like a really uh, good nourishing mush, if you will. And like I said, you can use pellets. You can use crumbles, you can mix grains, your scratch, whatever in there. All of it will go together, and I'm telling you, they're going to like it. Now, I do want to say one thing. I am a big advocate of putting diatomaceous earth into your feeds for your chickens, your goats, all of your animals, okay? I want to mention this right now because you're going to have to change this up a little bit. Are you ready? Now, if you put diatomaceous earth in your dry feed and then you wet it, you basically are pretty much canceling out your diatomaceous earth fact. So, I mean, it's just not, it, it can work, but it's not going to be as effective. So you may need to think about a different way to give them diatomaceous earth, maybe once, a, several times a week, maybe give them a dry treat that is, you know, mixed in with the DE, maybe get some, the cheapest uh, <laughs> nothing's cheap anymore, but maybe a three-way scratch. And like I said, ration it and treat it as a dry treat. Mix it heavy with DE. They'll love it. They'll love it. They'll take it. So I just want to mention that because I'm a big advocate of diatomaceous earth here and have been for many, many years. And I think it works very, very well for our animals. And, um, you know, like I said, if you wet the food, you wet the feed, it's going to lessen the effect, most likely. Now, looky here. I'm going to feed baby, waiting on that food to fluff up some. And I need to get some new sloggers because the, in, the inside part came out of one. So we're just going to mix and match it up today, y'all. Let's go. Good job. All right. Okay, so we are about actually an hour later. I gotta get these birds fed. I want you to look at these three buckets. Covered them all with water. I may, oh, I've got a bee visiting. Look at there, the bees are out. Uh, look, so you can see already turning to mush right there you see that same with this it's fluffing up still got some water in it you know that's i'm not gonna stress about that today because like i said we're trying to figure our, our our ratio out and the reality is folks the longer you let this stuff sit that's what they talk about with the fermentation process if you let this sit for a day or two which is ideally what you will do if you're trying to actually ferment this is going to absorb, okay? Now, this one might have been just a hair much. I don't know, but I really don't think so because I'm telling you right now, I've got a ton of feed still left in here. So, we're going to go ahead and feed them because what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to change over to a six, potentially a six bucket system because I feed in two different areas. So, like I said, go ahead and figure this out start doing it okay even if you're just doing pretty much what i'm doing here it's going to stretch your food and saving money is the goal here think about it if you're spending 16 dollars on a bag of chicken feed and you can cut it hopefully in half which is the ultimate goal that's eight bucks even if you only get it down to maybe 10 or 12 you're still saving a substantial amount of money <laughs> so
So I want you to see how this looks. We've actually mixed it with the three-way scratch, which is cheaper, not as high as protein as you need. Doesn't have it in there, but it's a nice treat for them. And even your grains, everything will swell up. So what that does, it's just like you. If you're eating, think about you eating dry popcorn. You just pop, 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 right? Whereas if you're eating creamed corn, creamed corn, you're, you're gonna slow down. So this allows the chickens to slow down, you know, take more time to eat, and it fills their bellies more. we're going to conclude the video we appreciate you watching we're going to adjust how we're feeding them in terms of like i said wetting the feed fermenting the feed i really think that we can get it down at least by 25 percent you got to monitor it you got to do what works best for your farm Ooh, bring that breeze in baby so that's what we're doing so i'm going to be getting some different uh feeding containers for them to put it in this is a work in progress, but try it out. Hey, like I said, if it can save you a few dollars right now on every single bag of feed, it is worth the time. Once you get it started, it just becomes an event that you do every single night, just a few, few minutes, just preparing for the next day and for the next day and for the next day. Just get a rotation going. So that's what I'm working on. We'll keep you posted. The birds are happy. We just gotta get the cost down. We gotta take action. We'll see you guys on the next video. Okay, so I wanna add this clip in my silky chalet. We are about to clean out the coop. I mean, excuse me, can we stop fighting? That's not necessary, but look. Normally their food by afternoon is gone. And this is that wet mash that I poured earlier. Look, look how much is left. Still moist, still there. It's working, it's definitely working.